As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. There's no crying in baseball! I ate his liver with some fava beans. I skinned. If I can change, and you can change, everybody can change! Welcome to another episode of Your Next Favorite Movie. I'm your host, Josh G. Today I am back with my regular co-host. Please welcome Chad. Hey guys. I always feel awkward doing this. I don't know what to say. When I'm talking to a microphone to a computer screen. To me. You're talking to me. But anyways, welcome Chris. What about the other guys out there? Yeah, Chris, say hi to the people out there. The imaginary people out there. The, you know, ones of ones that listen to the show. <laughs> Uh, it, it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> Hello, it's a pleasure to be here. It's not really a microphone. It's really just a hairbrush that you're speaking into. <laughs> That's what that is this whole time. <laughs> well, Chris, you should be happy because once again, we are going with your poll winner from last month. Feels like we did that poll forever ago at the final. Now that we're at finally point, recording it. it. <laughs> yeah. We're going back to November 18th, 1983, and we're going to talk about sleepaway camp. Welcome to Sleepaway Camp. Just when you thought you had seen it all, something new is waiting to scare you to death. Sleepaway Camp. You won't be coming home. Turn the wheel! Oh my God! Sleepaway Camp. Rated R. Oh, so we're going back in time. <laughs> <laughs> Purple exactly. rain, purple rain. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go a little bit further back. A little bit further than that, yeah. I don't know what was the hit song of eighty one. I don't remember. No, eighty three. I'm sorry, eighty three. What was the hit song of eighty three? Does anybody know? No, nah, I don't know. <laughs> but before we actually dive into yeah, Sleepaway Camp, uh, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I think we should talk a little bit about this poll because I I think this was the most interesting poll we've done so far, honestly. Yeah, right. I don't even remember what the hell the other choices were, to be honest. Okay, I remember so, my own choice. Well, Chad, you chose Dark City. I did choose. That's right. I did choose that one. And I chose Streets of Fire. And when this poll kicked off, Dark City took lead, Streets of Fire took over. Chad, you and I went back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. Yeah, I do remember Sleepaway being a camp tight was race. Having to yeah, catch Sleepaway up. Camp was, was straggling. Kyle yeah. was lagging behind. And it was around... 70 votes that Sleepaway Camp finally took a lead. And once it took a lead, it didn't let go. But mm-hmm. there for a while, I did not think Sleepaway Camp was going to win this. And of course, Chris, I love Sleepaway Camp. So when you chose it, I was just like, what should I choose? I'll just pick <laughs> something random off my watch list. And people really like the Streets of Fire idea, at least in the comments that we got on yeah. the actual post. They were talking about I'd it. I'd actually never it heard was, of that movie, but that's something I need to visit, I think, at some point. It was a pretty good split vote there towards I don't it was a good matchup between all three movies. I think this was probably one of the uh, those, con- uh, one those... of the contested film like <laughs> polls that we had. I well, honestly those think rabid so. hor- horror fans. I almost said horror fan. <laughs> horror fans. That's right. Those Me rabid, and my horror you fans. And your <laughs> <laughs> I rallied my yes, horror. Yes, you horror. No, they, they the those horror fans really turned out for it though. And I kept pushing. So I was like That's true. Chris has got the Tweety Box influence. But surprisingly, and I only got, you know, the ones. <laughs> the ones of ones, ones of followers. Ones of followers. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about it. Surprisingly, this took me by surprise. This movie has a Rotten Tomato critic score of eighty one percent. Now obviously these are people That's going back and reviewing, but that's what I was thinking too, because I was like, "Man, I thought the score used to be kind of lower, but I'm glad to see that people have reviewed it after all these years, or at least retrospectively, and have seen that no, this there's really a lot you can unpack from this." It's weird how movies like people look back on on these kind of movies like with kinder eyes, like <laughs> decades later. Well, it's about time because I mean. I mean, you look you, at like Troll Two, for instance. I mean, <laughs> it, it went from a zero to like six percent, Chad. It's not like skyrocketing or anything. But still, I mean, people turn out for that movie, though. I mean, they have a screening for it. People turn out for it. Well, and I think too is people's sensibilities have 
change mm. differently. And I know when we were kids, at least In we the were 90s, we were the yes. ones that were <laughs> renting a lot of these movies when they went to VHS, mm-hmm. and we're the ones that made them classics i guess for better lack of term here Mm. which a lot of them are that's we can consider them classics and whereas back then you know someone like uh roger ebert i remember like him and his buddy (laughs) on there were always calling like this movie's piece of trash i just cannot believe the the amount of what they did to their female characters (laughs) no no gene shallot was different he's the one that had the Awful hair awful and the hair mustache. Okay. And, yeah, he's way different. But he was a he was an asshole too. Well, Chris, I was talking about the critics. It's funny you said that because the audience is only a fifty nine percent for this movie. Like the the average go getter, the average voter, I should say, not go getter. <laughs> well, see, I wonder how often that's been updated or not too, in terms of how many people go back and are like, oh, I'll I'll go in there and rate this movie differently or i'll go back and find or finally rate this movie you know compared to the mm. critics that's probably uh, have josh seen it a little butt. bit more josh well i'm just gonna say i will say the critics is based off 27 reviews and the audience is based off 10,000 plus reviews so mm. there is that to 27 think about. critics have gone back to yeah take the time to review this on yeah. rotten tomato it says a lot I guess they didn't have time. For I don't know. It it just says, in, to me, it says a lot dropped. when <laughs> um, even amongst those few reviews, it's more positive because, you know, like I'm, even with the poll um, and the people who responded, I don't know. It seems like there's just a lot of great. There's some a lot of great memories, <laughs> if you will. People seem to mm. really always say that this was a good movie. So and that's good to, to hear. So let's talk about let's talk about this budget three hundred fifty thousand. How much do you think this movie makes? Because I'll tell you this, it was a bigger hit than I thought. I don't know how much money it made, but I know I did a quick calculation of the three hundred fifty thousand in today's money. That would be a little over a million dollars today. Inflation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and when you adjust it for inflation, yes, that's yeah. that's what it was. So they, I mean, they had a but, pretty uh, healthy budget for you know a little independent. Yeah, film. I mean, hell, I mean, a lot of movies I'm get surprised. released in theaters now, <laughs> like you know, million dollar, yeah, you know, production budget movies. But you know, I I don't know. I guess when hearing that kind of budget too, like there's some stuff in the movie, I sit there and go, oh, okay, I can see where some of that, how mm-hmm. the money was spent on this or that, you know, but. I see. How much do I? How much do you think it would made, Chris? I guess three hundred fifty thousand. So I don't know. Chris would say twenty eight million dollars. No, I don't know. (laughs) Fifteen million. (laughs) Josh's face. That was eleven million. So you you went. Oh, that that was my original number too. I was thinking in my head. (laughs) Yeah, sure, Chris. Chris, the psychic over here. (laughs) A little bit. A little bit. I was like, yes, I was thinking exactly 11 million. Why did I not say it? I know, but I was sitting there going, eh, just give a little bit more room because I bet it was bigger than that. So I went with it. That is surprising, though. I mean, that was a low production budget, and I'm sure the filmmakers banked on that. Yeah. Although he never did another movie until, what, 20 years later when he did Return to Sleepaway Camp? He's done two movies, and those are the two. Oh, there you go. He made his fortune on that first movie. He's like, <laughs> he's like, bye, y'all. I'm moving out to, you know, Wisconsin wilderness. Wisconsin wilderness. Wisconsin of all places. <laughs> I was like, sure, why not? So, Chris, you talked about renting it from. The, was this a rental for you? Did you rent this from the video store? No, no. Um, the first time I saw it was when you had it. Uh, when you bought it many years ago. The when I bought set. that box set. Mm-hmm. That was the first time that, I saw it. That was the first Same time I saw it. And I was funny that we had a sleepover that night. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we were like, we're going to watch some horror movies. And Josh was like, well, we're going to watch this then. <laughs> yeah. And I, I remember I had not heard of this at that time. Yeah. Same here. So what made you pick it up? Honestly, it was the fact that the box set looked kind of cool. It had three full length movies plus production footage of another movie and it was like 20 or 25 bucks and this is the early dvd day so i, I felt like mm-hmm. i was getting a lot of bang from my buck at the time <laughs> which you know you were no you were because like even the 
packaging for movies like some of the special edition movies and stuff they were really cool back then well it makes you wonder how much the dvd of this one is worth because i'm sure it's you know long out of print right oh of course uh what josh has is something you uh, it's a little hard to find a collector's um, item but, it's a collector's item i mean there's a lot of collectors out there that keep it anyway because they're just i don't know it's probably going to have some different things on there that you may not be able to find anywhere else in terms of features perhaps i'm not mm, really sure but yeah. packaging definitely packaging definitely and mine is signed by felissa rose so i will never get rid of mine yeah. personally <laughs> so that's a good thing too but did i you do get a picture have... with her when you got that signed i did we did angela face there you go <laughs> that's where josh puts in the picture in that part I, I mean i have posted posted that picture on twitter but yeah i'll probably post it again when this is out <laughs> there you go. but i do have the shout factory edition when it came out I, I do as well. I have the Shout Factor. I have it of this one. I don't have it of the sequels. So. I got the sequels. Chris, <laughs> like, finally, I win something. <laughs> <laughs> and those are out of print. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll have to just hopefully. Hope you find it in a thrift store somewhere. <laughs> yeah, stumble upon those at some point. Oh, but the really cool thing, I thought um, everyone always talks about the ending, right? But what was cool is that Chad, he, when he went to rewatch this movie or revisit it after a long time. Now, honestly, he, I don't think I had seen this movie since we watched it when you first bought it. Ooh, oh, wow. Yeah, okay. I, I, I mean, it's long. been a long time. I mean, I yeah. don't recall seeing this movie like how long? How long was that? It, that was probably about was 20, like, years 20 years ago. Early two, yeah, early 2000s. So it's probably sure. been about 20 years since I've seen this movie, oh, which is wow. weird to say. It is, because I thought for sure he would have. I'm like, am I, that, am, am I becoming the oldest thing in the room? Here? Maybe. <laughs> so I, I, I'm glad you said that. That should say this. Obviously, we go into spoilers on here. Everyone knows that. If you have not seen this, this is not one you want to listen to spoilers for. This is one Agreed. you want to get Agreed. a true blind watch in yep not know, that, knowing that was as little as possible <laughs> that was my other point before i forget because what was cool is that chad had revisited this movie recently but with a friend and his wife and they had never seen the movie they had never seen the movie <laughs> so needless to say when the ending came about they had that same shock and i mean it was uh, like dead silence yeah <laughs> <laughs> just like jaw open like what so it's just great that they had that same kind of experience that first time watchers had even back then was seeing the movie and so it's great to see that the same impact can happen to people who have never seen the movie to this day that that is that is awesome i love that yeah and I told Charles like, you realize how awesome that was that you got to watch this movie with first time watchers. That's that's so cool. Yeah, I don't, I don't know who I'd watch it with. That's if they haven't seen it, at least doesn't know about the ending to know to expect. You just it. gotta, you just gotta find somebody that's not a horror movie person and just have <laughs> them watch it because I guarantee you they have never seen the movie. Oh, but Chad's got to tell you too about what his buddy thought of Judy. When we get yeah, to when we get to her. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Well, well, we'll start at the beginning, and that's this boat scene. Because for some reason, in my mind, I remember this boat scene being at night, not in broad daylight. Like I remember this opening <laughs> completely wrong. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I don't know how you got that flipped. <laughs> and then the crazy thing, but you know what probably got you, Josh, was probably a little bit later in the movie where we see another clip of them as kids, and there's that point where we see like the two kids in the bed and they're and it's just a black background but they're that's, have just, yeah. that's got them spinning around so you probably thought nighttime related to somehow with the earlier scene yeah i could, I could probably, probably see that because for some reason when i was watching this uh normally when i watch it i don't i don't guess i watch it that opening scene that often because i've seen the rest of the movie tons of times didn't remember that i thought it was at night i thought it made it more difficult to understand what was going on, but no, they don't. Because one of the things about this movie is when you see this boat and this accident that happens, because you got the two kids with their father, you can clearly see in the water that that's the little boy, not the little girl, standing well, there in the water. I have to say, honestly, 
when I, I mean, when I first saw the movie that I can remember, I wasn't, I, I don't know. I wasn't sitting there thinking that, oh, Angela, well, I guess spoiler, right? That Angela was the boy that survived. You know what I mean? Even though the funny thing is, is that the clues are there in the movie. Mm Mm-hmm. And there's a few instances where it kind of spells it out for you, but I guess sometimes you're just not thinking. You're just kind of going along with that's the story. Each of my scene, life. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I, I am not know. a detective. I just Columbo. wasn't. Sometimes I wasn't being the detective of going like, wait, is this trying to say something differently? But I mean, but I think the funny thing about the beginning is, of course, we see the incomparable Aunt Martha. <laughs> Aunt Martha. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> yeah, she clearly a... she's insane. Clearly she's insane. Yeah, clearly she's in another movie. <laughs> she, I don't know. I don't know. She's doing the theater version of this. I don't know what she's doing. She's not Very in this campy, movie with everyone else. It, yeah. <laughs> but you know, the thing is, is that it definitely feels like that was a deliberate choice for the performance. Mm. I think so as well. I'm wondering if it was just a way to, I guess, add the campiness value to the movie and to the the actual twist, I guess. Because it's like, oh, what mad doctor would do this? And she, it turns out she was a doctor. That's true. I'll tell you something else I didn't realize till this one. That's before we get to Aunt Martha. And that's with the boat, with the the dad on the boat and then the other guy coming out. And I was like, oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, that was something I didn't pick yeah, up on at all the right? first time watching yeah. around, you know? Yeah, no, me either. Because in that flashback scene again, and we see what, and again, that gives you, that's supposed to give, I guess, more of a hint too, but, mm-hmm. but then you find out, oh, okay, well, never mind. She had two daddies, you know? Yeah. So, Progressive for that, the time. Exactly. Exactly. Very brave for the 80s. <laughs> Right there in, in the bed but, together. So. But, I mean, I th- this movie's also received its fair share of criticism, you know, in terms of, you know, its yeah. depiction of, you know, trans people and the, I guess, like, the effects that, you know, homosexual relationships can have on children and then, you know, the insanity, I guess, that can... That old well, trope that, you know, as, gay people as and much trans people, as people are somehow insane. As much as there was those people who would want to take that as a perspective, there's also just as much people or in spe- yeah. and in the community who have found that act- actually there's more strength uh, from mm-hmm. the characters and from the story as well, that it's actually more pro-LGBTQ mm. than it is, than you could really say of the criticism. So... I mean, Angela is now really kind of an icon. As, as she's she's a gay she's a, icon up there is, with yeah, Miss Piggy, the really, barefoot Contessa, yes. and Maleficent. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I mean she was she's a character that was picked on by her bullies, and she stands up to her bullies. Don't you know she's a yeah. carpenter's dream? <laughs> <laughs> Finish it, <Yeah>. Josh. <laughs> oh yeah. Flat as board needs a screw. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> a good screw. A good screw. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> but man, um, that I don't know. It's just I, I really like the Aunt Martha. A lot of people do too, of course. But the Aunt Martha character, that was just silly. But like I said, I think it's really supposed to add that kind of weird mad doctor mm-hmm. experience, uh, campiness performance or something. I guess that's what she was kind of going for. Because then the other clue she lays out too, she has... Oh well, here's your fake physicals uh, reports, oh, yeah. and make sure you don't tell them <laughs> how you got it. And then that's where she's like, "Thankfully, I'm a doctor, so I know how to do this." Right. Even though they know I'm a doctor, I'm like, "Then why do you? Can you not tell them about where you got your physical papers from?" I, but yeah. you're right. I, you're right. I, just that I, maybe you're on some of that mad doctor theory. I like that. Thank you. <laughs> Keep going. Doctor <Dr>. Dreadful. <laughs> Remember, kids, don't tell. <laughs> yeah, and then she's always needing like uh, uh, she'll she'll say she did something for him. Like I packed your lunch. Wasn't that yeah. nice of me? She like needs that reassurance. I guess mm. I don't understand why she needs that. 
I got you a bag of chips, a whole bag. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like, are we talking like a fun size bag or is she packing them literally a full size? Bags. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it's the full size. I mean, she's a doctor. She can spend the money on it. <laughs> well, I just meant that she give like a normal, like you share around the, the house kind of size bag. Is that what she means by full size? That'd be too much. No, no, no Josh, because the you don't share with the family. What you have the it's bag a for family yourself. size bag for one person. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, That's I mean, she, how it works. She is well, giving them. Not, well, I was gonna she, say it's just also gross to share a bag too. Or by putting their hands in there on that food. Ugh. Well, you take the bag and you shake it out on your plate, Chad. That's right. But uncouth, most people are uncouth and they don't do that. They just re- reach in the bag with their dirty fucking hands. And well, that's why most people everything. tend and then you're to just actually like keep the bag food. for themselves. <laughs> that's, yeah, well, that's the point I was going to get to. Yeah. That's the reason why you have the bag for yourself, so you don't have to share and you don't have to cross-contaminate shit. Well, if I'm keeping the bag for myself, I'm getting really fat about and just literally turning the bag up to my mouth, uh, and shaking it down. So <laughs> fun it in. Most humans have what we call fatty attacks. And when that happens, <laughs> what did Josh call it? A fat fit? A fat fit. Exactly. <laughs> and an FF. I have plenty of those. And, uh, you know, there have been times I remember in my younger days where I would have a full size family bag and all to myself. <laughs> And I would just lie to the cashier and be like, yes, that's for me and my friends tonight. <laughs> just like sometimes I'll say that at the drive-thru. The drive-thru I order two meals? Order two meals. Like, uh, yeah, I think, I, think my, my, I think my friend said he wanted a number five large. <laughs> He's not with me. I'm just running an errand for yeah. him. Yeah. And then you pretend you're on your phone yeah. like, texting. <laughs> when really oh, yeah. Reading not. his order. <laughs> you're yep. reading it. Yeah. <laughs> There I mean, go. who hasn't done that? <laughs> and then you, and then like any real American, you go sit in your car and you shovel it in your mouth when you're by yourself. You have the one meal to yourself. And then when you get home, you have the other meal. I mean, <laughs> to yourself. <laughs> now we're back to camp and we get what is truly one of the most probably despicable, disgusting characters ever. And that's this cook guy, this, this show oh, that God. works oh, at yeah. the camp. Okay. Chad, you got to tell them the reaction also from your friend. Well, it was funny because like when we were when we were trying to decide on a movie, because I knew I was going to suggest this one to them. Um, and I was like, yeah, I was like, uh, yeah, Sleepaway Camp. And they're like, OK, yeah, we've never heard of that because they're a little bit younger than I am. So they're like, yeah, yeah, we, you know, whatever. And my friend's wife was like, yeah, I'm cool with anything, just as long as it doesn't have any like rapey shit to it and i was like oh yeah i think it's yeah it's fine like whatever (laughs) and then of course like within the first few minutes you meet this creepy you know child molester guy and i'm like oh my god (laughs) so she's like like, i was like i don't think there's anything that really happens in here with that but then of course you know a little bit later he gets angela in the back and he starts undoing his belt i'm like i am so sorry i am so sorry I really don't remember this movie. I, I, that's what I was trying to tell. I was like, look, it's been like 20 years, maybe even more than that since I've seen yeah. this movie. So I don't remember all the details. I mean, and the thing is, like, the guy was trashy, you know, obviously mm-hmm. he's a yeah. creepy dude. But thankfully, it didn't go. It didn't go beyond around, you know, just but, him being a creep. But it was but just enough to kind of give you the to make the you feel tense like you need moment to, to make you feel uneasy <laughs> yep and you need a shower for a moment yeah yeah when he uses the line where i come from we call them baldies and i was like eh. oh my oh, goodness yeah, yeah, that is yeah. gross <laughs> and what was it he said to when they came off the bus he says oh Valley, there ain't nothing there ain't nothing is he calls him young chicken he refers to young, him as young that's chicken right. yeah oh god oh god so I, I kept thinking he was like saying that like oh age ain't nothing but a number or something or but then again, that I, I know he said. I know the shit. the other cook says, that "Aren't they too ago. young for you?" And and he says, "There's no such thing as too young." And That's, I like, it. That's it. That's yeah. it. I guess maybe I'll say R. Kelly. Now you I'm know. Kidding. Who- <laughs> I'm That's too I mean, R. Kelly is a pedo. So. <laughs> now, now, do you guys know who the other cook was? His side. The, are, we, the are, we next, about, which, are we asking about who the actor is? Yeah, like who he is, yes. Was it, you're talking about the older black man or right. the, yep. oh, he looked familiar. I just could not place him. 
That is James Earl Jones' dad, Robert Earl Jones. No way. <laughs> yep. Holy crap. Oh my gosh. You know what? The weird thing is now I feel like I can see the resemblance. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I yep. did not know that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's wild. He didn't now, have the same deep voice, though, as James mm, Earl Jones. No, no. I don't know where. Can you imagine if he did, though? Like, I have no idea that James Earl Jones was like a second generation actor. I mean, yeah. he be a third generation actor. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what else his dad has done, but I do know that's him in this. So, Wow. I know that my friends and I decided that the camp owner, the boss guy, <laughs> we've decided that he, he that the camp is a front for the mob and that he... <laughs> He's a member of the mob and he runs the camp. Because every scene you see him in, he's got a damn cigar. <laughs> and like he even talks like, let's just keep this between us, okay? There's yeah, no that's true. For the yeah, kids to know about yeah, all he's this like, going on. I mean, Don't make, disappoint me, okay? I'll make you an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> I mean, we decided that, that this camp is more than just a camp. It's a, it's a front. Hey, we haven't even said the name of the camp. Camp Arawak is where they're at and i yeah. mean how how much is that name right there tells you about it's more of a slasher i mean whack is in there i mean in friday 13th then it literally called camp blood so i mean like oh, how, yeah. who would go to that camp blood like <laughs> i don't know was that i mean maybe that was a nickname for it that's the ni- yeah because after the murders they were okay yeah, okay that makes more sense okay so anyway, we got ricky and angela arriving murder. at the camp and they're talking about how this Judy character has developed breasts over the summer or over the year because it's back to summer camp. And not only that, but she looked like she probably aged like 10 years than the other kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, the thing I found funny about this is like Ricky knows who all these people are. Angela doesn't. She's been with them eight years at this point. Has she never gone to camp and Ricky has gone to camp? Like, why does she not know anyone? Ricky knows Paul. Ricky knows Judy because apparently they had a thing over the previous summer, I guess it sounded like. Now she's not an older I'm, voice. I'm going to assume that Angela was not around all of that because it could have been that Aunt Martha was maybe trying to shape her into good answer, good answer. Into her form, <laughs> if you will. And because she wasn't going to send Angela out until things looked right and until maybe she's acting the way that she wants her to or something. Okay. If you know what I mean. You know, that's my guess. Is that maybe okay. Aunt Martha was like, This is my experiment I'm working on before I send her to the world. I can buy that. I can buy that that she hadn't let her go yet until she, she mm-hmm. thinks she's ready. She's not. Yeah. But she thought she was ready at this point. She still wasn't ready, but well, I didn't even notice at the beginning of the movie she was <clears throat> very quiet to aunt martha too and you know she didn't really respond to aunt martha compared to ricky ricky was just kind of like oh yeah, this, ricky is, just, was definitely the this is just mom being mom now. or something but angela was just behaving you know right and how much how much do we think ricky knows about what is going on that's what i was that's, saying too, i got know? the me i got the feeling that he never knew yeah um, i can agree with you I, it I seems like it's something that would be hard to hide but I would think so as well, but I, oh man, I feel like there was an instance in there where she pretty much, oh, I think when things were being revealed, because I think when she said, um, you know, oh, we simply can't have another son, blah, blah, blah. I think she said Richard doesn't know, which I'm thinking Rick, uh, short for Ricky. So, yeah, or long form of Ricky, the name. So, yeah. yeah. So I think. That's what I took was yeah. she meant him and that he yeah. he doesn't know. So that's what I took it as. Huh. Yeah, and I guess you can keep them separated because if Angela's a girl, the boy doesn't need to see her growing up. So right, right. And plus, uh, Angela arrived a little, or Peter at this time arrived a little older. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I don't know. It's it. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, thing. Peter was supposed yeah. to be like five at the time. The accident happens. Oh. I don't know if like it cuts to eight years later. So mm-hmm. she's 13 and that's when we see Aunt Martha. But I don't I guess technically maybe I think she was with her the whole time from yeah. the age of five until the point we get to meet her. Yeah, it was interesting. 
Yeah. But I took it as Ricky never knew. Yeah, I think you're right. That's kind of how I took it because I don't know that he would be as protective of her if he knew that. Exactly. Yep. And then it would be adding another person into the secret. And I don't know if Aunt mm-hmm. Martha was going to be. I don't. She was probably going to be smart to make sure that everything was covered. You know, that only she knew, and no one else. Well, and Angela, but that's it. Right. She <laughs> can't afford any liabilities. Exactly. This next scene made me laugh because she's like, my name is Meg. M-E-G Meg. I'm like, are there a bunch oh, of people yeah. out here spelling Meg differently? Like, do you have to spell oh, it man. out? I told Chad, I was like, uh oh. P-X-Q-R, that's Meg. <laughs> <laughs> I told Chad, I was like, oh man, it's the Meg. <laughs> the Meg. Because she's like a giant. She's like a jolly green giant walking around with all those... Well, Number she's not a camper. She is a counselor, so she is supposed to be older. Yeah. So I'll give her she that. She's older. And she's a, a shit counselor. But apparently, I'll tell you a that. Giant. she's a yes, she counselor. Is. That is true. Yes, she is. Like, I thought the funny thing was, is like after she shook Angela, right? Yeah, she shook mm-hmm. her, and then the next scene after that was showing that. Oh, by the way, Meg, you have the night off. Like the counselors were kind of together. <laughs> like, oh, everyone gets the night off except for these two people. Yeah. And I'm like, why is it Meg suspended or <laughs> exactly. expelled from her job at this point? Well, we yeah. we learned because she's got an in with Mel, the camp, the guy who runs the camp. So the dumb. Well, she's trying because when she asked, remember, like his reaction was kind of like, oh yeah, yeah, we can have. Uh, I don't know. Originally, he was kind of like looking on his clipboard before she was saying, well, I was thinking of coming up to have dinner with you. And he was like, oh, okay. Then that's when he got interested. <laughs> creepy old man. Yeah, very creepy. Then it makes me sit there and think with Meg that maybe that was the only thing good she can get that she thought, you know? Because, I mean, honestly, what would she have got from it? <laughs> and, that's, and that's the thing I asked Chris. I'm like, what was she chasing after that? She was chasing after the owner of the camp for this old yeah. man. I'm telling you, he was a, he was in the mob. He had that money. <laughs> That's what she was going after. So you think she may have knew he was in the mob? Oh, definitely. I mean, you don't just walk around with cigars like that. Well, and I'm sitting there thinking it's not like he's a, a rich man either. So I'm kind he of thinking from her, himself as a rich man, though. you know. And it wasn't like he was a buff, hot silver daddy or something. So, but I'm just thinking like that's well, true. That camp maybe... had a lot of beefcake her age that yeah. she could have gone yeah. after, but she was choosing. And it's you can't tell me that none Mel. of those teenage boys would have gone, not have exactly. gone after I mean, her. Teenage boys so, don't go after anything. They'll say yes just to anything. Saying. I mean, yeah, it's giving a little bit of credit to Meg, I guess. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah. your shitty attitude that the boys didn't exactly. like. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. So. And she was well, more than would be pretty, but if you have an ugly personality, you are ugly inside and out. Well, and the other thing is, you know, even like Judy, they want to go for the older boy. So maybe Meg's just like, well, if I go for the oldest man here, I can't be beat. Jesus. Yeah. Though. Well, <laughs> that guy's old enough to be her granddad. Well, and then the, or the other thing is, is that Judy had the intention of like all the guys. And since she was friends with Judy, she just thought, well, I can't compete with that. So I'm just going to go for the guy that Judy wouldn't go for. <laughs> possible God, girls are so catty yeah if you have an insight into girls psychology with this let us know <laughs> in the comments hey I, I was just thinking off the top of my head but i'm just because i mean why like you said why else would judy be all upset that yeah. all, out of all the boys that are giving her attention that this one boy one boy would yeah. be paying attention to angela you know and of course like you said it's power and she likes yep. the attention and she wants to be the most popular girl yeah, it didn't matter who that one boy happened to be. She was going to be mad exactly. about it. Right. Yeah. Because there's that she even chased after him, you know, because they got caught making out in the woods by uh, Angela. Angelique. Mm-hmm. So, Angelique. <laughs> Angelique. <laughs> Up next, Chad, your favorite scene with the cook in the pantry because Angela's not eating. Thanks, oh, Thanks yeah. for that. I forgot about that. <laughs> Yeah, she's yeah, not we, eating, so they take her to the right. pantry to meet her. Mr. See. Beefcake counselor comes to get her to right. get her something to eat. Oh my god! That now, can we talk about the beefcake guy for a second? Because that was <laughs> that was funny. Like the whole time in that movie, I had to sit there and wonder, like, did they tell him to bring his own clothes or something? Yeah, oh, I know. So... I think they did. I think now it's kind of clicking. 
<laughs> I think I saw the recent this video on YouTube. It was an old Q and A with Felissa Rose. I think she did mention that they had they were asked if they could bring their own clothes and stuff. So that guy, I think, actually brought his own clothes, and so they were just tight on him. Like they didn't. He has. He, yeah. he was wearing basically speedos. And, yes, and, like that. Because like the it was hilarious. Because like. Yeah. The first thing he was in when he comes up to the table to talk to her and be like, hey, you know, like his shorts are so short, but like the the tip of his dick hangs lower than the leg <laughs> openings of his shorts. And it was hilarious because we were sitting there and watching it. And my buddy's wife, she goes, I'm staring at his dick right now. She's like, there's nowhere else to look. <laughs> I know. Can you imagine what it was like when we got the HD version of that? <laughs> 4K saying, version. But Chad was saying that he <laughs> he and his buddy and his wife got stuck watching what looked like a a VHS copy or something. It was just oh. a standard definition copy. Okay. But it, I mean, it was definitely it had that low quality to it. So it was right. kind of interesting because it was like because <laughs> then Chad watched VHS it with copy. me again. He ended up watching it with me when I was watching, and of course, it was a. It was an HD, HD copy, copy, so it looked it. totally different. But I, yeah, Chad brought that up, and I was like, "Yeah, you can imagine what's like seeing this in HD." <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's kind of funny because the counselors, you know, showed off camp- his gingerbread and everything. Yeah, <laughs> most camp counselors are usually like your older teenagers or maybe even college, maybe early college mm-hmm. age. But this guy, the beefcake guy, looked like he was older older than that so and because he even had the furry stomach and all so it's kind of like hmm i mean nothing that was wrong with that because you know and you know you can also tell they shot this movie like up in like the new york massachusetts area because the way people talked yeah <laughs> like there's ricky, like one guy is ricky, like for sure yeah ricky and that one guy is like i gotta take a wicked dump <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, only yeah. somebody from massachusetts would say that but we do get a cool, not a death scene, because that's the only problem is that he doesn't actually die from this. But after he gets caught by, busted by Ricky in the pantry, we see him checking on this huge, and I mean huge, pot of chair. Oh, yeah. That's pretty <laughs> and bad. And he still even has to, like, strain to look into the pot yep. standing up on the chair. He still <laughs> couldn't see over it. I'm so, kind of surprised that when it came to the part where it's like, oh, obviously it's a point of view shot, and then he's kind of like, pushed i'm surprised that he was out so long like bro you're on a chair just jump down well i guess the thing is i'm surprised that he was able to hold himself without knocking the the pot pot over over right away because the pot was basically as tall as he was Mm -hmm. yeah so it's like isn't he like burning up now or something with the steam (laughs) and all stuff the facial you know wouldn't he not be burning against the pot by then (laughs) you would think so and I would think that uh, that stove it was on was never going to get that thing to boiling anyway. It wasn't that big. No either. Yeah. Like, I realize at a camp you have to cook in big quantities, but this thing just looks unrealistically <laughs> big. Like, I don't think they're ever going to get anything done with that. But, you know, the thing is... <laughs> and you know what's funny, Chad, when you said that? He was putting in the large corn. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Did oh, yeah. Yeah. Shucking some corn. corn. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was gonna say what I think is really cool about this movie, though, with the the kills, is that they start off like in, in a way that, like, when you're investigating, they could be accidents. Yeah. But then, like, toward the end, it just straight becomes it just comes out and out like homicide. Brutal. It becomes brutal. So yeah. I think it's pretty funny that at first, you know, it was just like. You know, oops, he fell. You know, and oops, he's he burned got stung badly. By the, you know, burned which, badly. By the way, you got to give credit to the effects. I thought yeah. too. That's where I saw it definitely with the budget, right? Yeah. Because the when the guy obviously got burned with the pot and water and all that stuff, like the his skin, like the way they took care of that. What you call was that? Good. Palpitation. Factor? No bladder. Bladder, like bladder effect. Yeah. Because <laughs> they had even like where all of a sudden like they would go back and forth between the guy's face, and you could tell it was just getting worse the blistering and stuff and you see the skin just kind of like starting to ooze pop or something right and and the effects guy was ed french who we previously talked about on our blood rage episode last year he improved (laughs) (laughs) or did he well 
They were filmed the same year, I guess. I guess technically this would have been filmed first. Blood Rage definitely came out after, but it was filmed way before it ever came out. And I will not be having any Blood Rage slander here. I will tell you that right now. <laughs> I will not be having that. It was Thanksgiving. <laughs> Chris is like, what? It was Thanksgiving? I didn't even notice it. <laughs> Meanwhile, big letters across the screen. Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> Huge, it didn't feel like Thanksgiving. Huge That's Thanksgiving why. spread on the. But I digress. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're but in yeah, the summer now. Place again. We're in the summer <laughs> at the moment. And then the so the guys burned and everything. Yeah, it was a good good job. Good job on their part. Good job, Senor French. But but like in chat, this this kind of leans into your theory about the camp director because he tells Ronnie, "Don't call the parents. Don't let them know." And he mm-hmm. tells the other cooks, "Hey, don't say anything." And I'll we'll give you his pay. Well, how about an extra yeah, fifty bucks a week? He splits up. They can't refuse. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know what's bad? Like the close-up shots they've got of James Earl Jones's father. Uh, you can see the insect sticky thing hanging over the main table. Oh, the fly, the the yeah. Fly. And I was like, all, Ew, all, all around that like food, all, over the all around that Ugh. food where they prepared in the kitchen, and there's all those bugs just hanging there, like. Ugh. Yeah, definitely. I, I feel like eating at a camp would be pretty nasty. Just yeah, in general. Yeah, you definitely can't have, like, you have to throw out your prissy side. That's for, The only thing I would think, too, sure. is that it, was, it would be probably... Which is why I've never been to camp. I can't get rid of my prissy Easy food side. they have to make, like, Monday, it's... Meatloaf it's, day. Monday, no, meatloaf. No, no, like, Monday would be, like, Sloppy Joe days or something. It's Sloppy Joe Monday, kids. <laughs> And then Tuesday is Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday. No, oh, and the next Friday up we were pizza day. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Friday would be pizza day. You're right. Friday's got to be pizza day. And Thursday would be spaghetti day. Also, that's another thing. How long are they at this camp? The whole well, summer, it seems like. Well, most Must camps are usually expensive. the whole summer, just about. I don't know. Yeah. Camps are fucking expensive. Yeah. I don't know how much they were back then, but camps these days are expensive, even for like a two week thing. That's the thing. I don't really remember camps being around like this at all. And maybe was, I know yeah, I never went. I don't know. Well, that's the thing. Let's see. I, I never went to a camp. I actually was kind of scared of going to a camp when I was a kid. Was that a fear of yours? Was it because of Friday the 13th? <laughs> no, I think I was just scared of being around strangers and a bunch of kids that I didn't know and sharing. Uh, a cabin a with space. a bunch of kids. Okay. Yeah, I just and was seeing not, you in your underwear, even at a tidy whitey. Yeah, even as a little kid, I was just not comfortable with that. <laughs> you think they would have a problem with your nudity, Chris? Yeah, I was saying now, Chris yes. is like, "Here's my nudity. Hey, how's yeah. it going, y'all?" No. <laughs> I mean, Chris is sitting here nude right now. Y'all just don't see it. And I'm talking out my ass instead <laughs> of my mouth. <laughs> oh lord. Well, this was. I just didn't realize these things existed. Like, I don't remember. Was there a camp? Anywhere near mm-hmm. us? You know, there, uh, probably not. In, we live in Charlotte for one, so it's a city. But there I mean, I don't think if there's some camps, they'd probably be up like in the mountains. Yeah. Maybe is what I would think of, or maybe even at near the beach. Perhaps who knows? Towards the coast, but a beach camp? Who's heard of such a blasphemy? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> like I always thought, like the fun activities would be cool to do, but then. Then again, like I said, I had my hesitancies because I was yeah, like, I don't, don't want to be around a lot of strangers. Stories about people getting bullied at camps and stuff. I don't know. I feel like that would have been like a traumatizing point. I don't know. I, but I wonder, like, if at the age I'm at now, if it would have been cool to try at least once, see how it would have been. Would have forced but, you out of your shell, I think. Probably at that time. Probably. Oh, I thought he meant if he could go to camp and try it now. But I don't know. You're a little old. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the funny thing is, there are. I think there are adult camps out there, though. Oh lord! Not like that. Not yeah, like they're that. called like. But there are nude like camps, camps. Nudist camps, yes. But no. <laughs> I don't know. I nudist was, colonies. <laughs> I kind of want to see old man Chris roll up to a camp with a bunch of twelve and thirteen year olds, like, "Hey guys, oh, no, no, I'm a fellow <laughs> camper." <laughs> Not you know, gonna like that, happen. That uh, Steve Buscemi uh, meme where he's like, "Hello, fellow kids." <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, that'd be gross. I'm exactly. 13 too. <laughs> Who knows, Chris? Oh. If you went to camp when you were a teenager, maybe you would have had your your first crush. 
Probably, but your I had first, crushes all the first, time. Even well, as a I mean, kid, your first so, romance. I mean, I mean, your first romance. My head was a slut from the beginning. <laughs> Chris, Chris would have been getting. Original. Chris would have been getting hand jobs behind the cabins at night. Or I would have given the hand jobs. <laughs> <laughs> I could have done like on Grandma's Boy and also invented the hand job plus the finger in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> Chris walks back to camp like this. <laughs> exactly. One finger pointed out. One point finger pointed walking. out, so you don't get the mess on you. Like, girl, you you could just walk home you like just this. Walk back to your camp, to your uh, bunk like this until you get to the the bathroom and then wash your hand with soap. Oh, it wouldn't even be that. You're at camp, Chris. You'd be going, "Hey, want to smell my finger? Just to do it." <laughs> 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 or we could have done the game like they did with the kids there. Actually, I probably would have liked that game. I probably been like, let's do it again. <laughs> Which game? Oh come on, <laughs> the setup game. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the prank. Yes, <laughs> the prank where the kid had Me, his ass in his see, face and he sat up and his see all those right other kids. kids all those cracked. other kids would have been sitting. <laughs> <laughs> all those other kids were sitting there like, eh, what are me on the other? I've been like. That was awesome. I was like, who's next? <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. That's that probably would have been the other thing, too. Like, I had totally forgotten about that prank being in the movie. Yeah, because and we so, like, compared when it, it happened, to another movie. Of course, movie. I'm sitting there like, guys, I'm sorry. I forgot about this scene, too. Because, I mean, like, him, you see, like, a whole kid's ass and everything. You see the other kid's face go right into that crack. Yeah, you hear it go. You know, the slap <laughs> and everything. Just, yeah, it's just a... <laughs> And, and and that's that's the cool thing about this camp movie is that it's actual kids. Like most yeah, times, yeah. it's like yeah. people in their twenties and they're still trying mm-hmm. to play older teenagers. No, these are young. Ki- Although I will say, Ricky's seventeen, but he does not look it. Like he's seventeen. No, he, he, had, he had the baby oh, God, face. No, he looked movie. like he was like fourteen or something. And like <laughs> me and Chad were also thinking. I told Chad, I was like, "Oh man," I was like, "I remember this prank joke." And I was like, "But they also did it in that movie, Heavyweights." <laughs> With Ben Stiller. <laughs> I just remember Ben Stiller coming up and then he took the blind off and he's like, oh my oh God. My God. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. And up next but we anyway. get this this nice little we, softball game, which delivers us one of my favorite lines in a movie ever. Josh, and that's when I got a quick question. <laughs> okay. When we were kids, why did we never try the prank? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I remember that time you go to Josh and Josh was traumatized. <laughs> Josh was crying. He's like, I got goaded. <laughs> and for you fellas who know what the goat is, you know what it is. <laughs> if you know, you know. You know, you know. Oh, anyway, yeah. this is, it delivers one of your favorite lines. Favorite lines. And that's when, you know, they're playing the softball <laughs> game against the other camp, I guess. I guess campers from across the way. I don't know. And those guys were also wearing very short crop oh. top shirts. And yeah, this was shirts. the early '80s. This that's just normal. So they were campers from another camp. And then, I th- like, what, I think oh, they were. And then oh. also, what made this like made me kind of respect it is that there were some people out there playing this playing softball in their jeans. This was in the '80s, so you know those jeans were stiff, <laughs> didn't have a lot of give. They're not like today, where you have like the four way stretch and everything. Like I can't wear jeans unless they stretch. Yeah, I, I can't know. imagine wearing jeans back then. Like you know, well, yeah, wearing cardboard. That's the funny legs. thing is because if it's supposed to be in the summer, you think most people would be wearing shorts. Yes, not, yeah, not that's pants, but like, some of these some of these kids were wearing it? pants. But granted, I know the movie was shooting during a time where it was in the fall. In the fall, where it was colder, it was so. cold and. At least during the baseball game part, I would understand. If you're going to run and slide, you're going to want to have pants on because that is going to tear up your legs. <laughs> but it's when the other the other kid tells Ricky to eat shit and live, and Ricky's like, or eat shit and die the normal way. And Ricky says, yeah. eat shit and live, Bill. And I'm like, that funny. no, no, yeah. that, might, that might be worse to eat shit and yeah. then you have to live through it. And you're like, you have to oh. through it, yeah. I had to say that was a good comeback from Ricky because I was like, yep, that's a good one. Yeah, I like that one. That would go to the dance. Angela's just sitting there. Guys are calling her Looney Tunes because she doesn't want to talk and all that. And that's the stuff. scene where she finally talks to the guy when after he's you know. Was that her first time saying hi? This to, this was her fu- her yeah. first thing when she says and goodnight to Paul. Judy Judy was fucking pressed 
because she's like, why is she talking? Who is this guy she's talking to? And meanwhile, she's like surrounded by boys yep. at this Constantly. dance. But she is like shook. Judy, <laughs> that, who's like. That Angelique is talking. Four, who's like 13 going on 30. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's yeah, your old, your old looking face. That's fair. Well, that's kind of, she very much had that, you know, early 80s, like, I'm a woman look. And it's just mm. like when I think of Judy, I think of like the hair put onto the side, ponytail, mm-hmm. like, you know, and then a lot of makeup. That's and true. Big boots. Yep. That was her big revelation over the last year oh, when they have like, a scene. Yep. <laughs> After Angela talks for the first time, we get our. Next uh, death scene, I guess, where Kenny and his girlfriend go out on the lake and he plays the trick where he flips the boat. She gets mad and leaves. And, of course, the killer pops up and drowns him. Uh Uh-oh, what do you guys say? That's where you sit there and go, that boy was stupid. Because (laughs) he could have got himself some. But instead he's like, I'm going to play a prank. He wants a prank. (laughs) Right. I'm like... How many boys would have done that? Not many. They would have been like, hey, I'm out here with a girl by herself. Yeah. Oh, you know what really bothered me more about that scene is that it was at nighttime. It would have been pitch black underneath that boat. Yep. So how would she have drowned him without like a flashlight or something that she <laughs> could have had <laughs> with her? There was none of that here. What Somehow he... there was a light source in inside the capsized overturned boat. Well, of course, because it's a movie. So you got to see his expression. But the other question I had, what did the boy do to Angela? I think, if I'm not mistaken, he was one of the ones when they were at the dance. They were all daring each other to ask her to go to the lake. Oh, and it was then the make fight, him... right? Yeah. He was the fight with Ricky. Is that mm-hmm. right? Yeah, I think yeah. so. This is the guy Ricky fought with when okay. he came in. Okay, yeah. Now I'm, now I'm caught up. Yeah. Although that was funny because all those boys got into that big huddle of a fight. And then even the adults were just sitting there like, no, nope, just let them go. I it. say, just let the kids <laughs> beat the shit out of each other. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> just that's one way. Just let them what, go at it, Chad. What okay. was he saying to Angela? Like, was he also picking on her because she wasn't talking? Mm-hmm. Is yeah, that why? That, yeah, because yeah, once she wouldn't talk to anybody, I think he was I think he was the one that says she's Looney Tunes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then you yeah. always kind of sit there and wonder, like, how does she know to go underwater and suddenly pop over the under the boat with him. Like, how did she know that? Smart killer. Killer, she, killer instincts. Seen by the other kids on the, yeah, the, the shoreline. Yeah, the kids on the shoreline. You have them wearing their tidy whities <laughs> I, I guess that, um, you talk about it not being light under the boat, but it was dark outside, so maybe they wouldn't have noticed it. So you can That's use the night to advantage and disadvantage, I guess. And I forgot, but she also... Did they also make it seem like she didn't have a shirt on in that moment, too? I, I really only think you see the head, so... That's what mm-hmm. I think so, too. But I didn't see, like, an outline of a collar, so I was thinking that she may have... Well, you're seeing it from the back, and the hair is long, mm-hmm. from what I remember. Yeah, so I don't think... I don't know. I can't remember that part. <laughs> it's a good point. I don't know anything about that. Yes, very sad. <laughs> And I think it's funny because he's picking on that girl like, oh, is that a water snake in there? Well, And then, of course, his body's discovered the next day. And, and a damn snake crawls out of his mouth. And a snake crawls out of his mouth. Yeah. That was gross. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, the officer says it looks like it's a drowning, but he's going to have to check it out. And Mel's like, no, no, it's obvious. He panicked. He drowned. You know, we're, I'll call his parents. Don't worry about it. And Ronnie tells the officer, you know, what's weird about this is Kenny was like the best swimmer we have around here. So he should have been able to swim his way out of this. He wouldn't have panicked and drowned, but I forget know. too. Was he also a counselor or not? I think he was just a camper. Swole right? guy, swole guy. Yeah, he was a counselor. No, no, no. Uh, I was talking about the guy who drowned. drowned. The swole guy's oh, the one who told the cop that he was a good no, swimmer. No, but... no, uh, no. Yeah, I don't think he. I think he was just a camp attendee. Gotcha. Counselor swole was the beefy guy. <laughs> counselor beefcake. <laughs> counselor beefcake. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Counselor Beefcake, I like that. Can we get a volleyball game? More Judy and Meg getting jealous of Angela for no fucking reason. Oh, yeah, that's where Meg blows up on Angela, I think. (laughs) After after Paul and Angela kiss for the first time is where Meg does her blow up, yeah. 
God, she got on my nerves, what a bitch. And I, I was like, she should have been <laughs> expelled after that. But like, she's attacking. Oh, and then the worst part was la- a little bit later when she comes and picks up Angela over her shoulder and drops her in the lake. Throws yeah, her that, that's yeah. Throws, her, throws in. her in there. Yeah, throws, throws I was like, at that lake, point, yeah. she should have been expelled. Right? You can't. You shouldn't that's be allowed to treat a camper fire. that way. No. No. It was in the eighties. Gentle the- bullying was acceptable. And the actress was saying that her and Felissa Rose had become friends on set at that point. So that scene was really tough to film doing that because she had to really throw her in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had to imagine that would be tough, but especially when... That's why if you're an actor, yeah. you don't become friends with nobody. <laughs> do No, what you do is you do the method acting. Method acting. Yeah. So Meg continues to be Meg off so camera. You, get, you basically get Daniel day Lewis's Angela. In that. <laughs> <laughs> so... So Meg gets Meg gets a little bit in trouble when she yells at Angela by Ronnie. So then we cut to the cabin and Judy's mad at Angela for getting Meg in trouble. And then this is where she brings up the she doesn't even shower with the other girls. She must be queer. And I'm like, don't you think she would want to shower with the other girls if that was the case? Like if that was her thing, right? Or I don't know because you know I guess I got like a little trick because I hate when some people sit there and go. Oh, you're gay. That means you're going to stare at me naked and blah, blah, That's blah. true. And that's true. You have, like, you have a really big ego to think that's that. That's true. That's fair. Because I'm gay, that, that means, oh, I'm automatically attracted to you. Yeah, I remember I was actually having this conversation with someone at work, and I said, you know what? You'd be mad if you went to a gay bar and no man hit on you, though. You'd be angry yeah, if they exactly, didn't. exactly, right? <laughs> be like, man, I wish my bank account was as big as your ego. Right? So that's fair. So she she accuses her of being queer or had not having hit puberty yet, which yeah she's like I bet she hasn't even had her period, right? Which that was a thing and they made fun of and Carrie she was getting her first one in the shower at an yeah. uh, older age. It was that was also dropping hints about mm-hmm. the twist anyway because they talked about the, again the the joke there that Judy throw where she's like. She has a flat chest. Why aren't you in the shower with the other girls? And, you know, right. Those were like little hints there that, but then on the other hand, if you're a viewer and you're watching it for the first time as well, you're not, you're not really, really, you're not really you're thinking, thinking, thinking that she's, thinking she's just, just being, being a bully. A bully. Yeah. Yeah. She's being a bully. And even Felissa Rose said like, she tried to tape down her bra a little bit to make it look flatter. But she said, mm-hmm. I was also 13. It wasn't that big of a problem for me at the time. <laughs> So, I mean, (laughs) some girls just don't develop yet. Some girls do, but not all. So it doesn't necessarily has to mean that. Now, and then this is chat where your guy has to take his wicked dump and they do the beehive scene. (laughs) This is the guy that I don't actually know. (laughs) (laughs) That's Chad's guy. He brought up the wicked dump guy. This is his guy. This is the one I don't I don't know what he did to earn it. This is the character. I'm not sure what he yeah. did to earn it. I don't remember. Either. I thought the same thing too. Well, he was the one that threw the water balloon, right? Maybe. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Is that what it was? Water. Yeah, that's what okay. it was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he was with those guys. He, no, yeah, he there was the is. However, guy. there is a death scene that happens towards the end that I sit there and think, well, what did they do to deserve that? Mm-hmm. And the only thing I could come up with, I guess, when we get to that, is that she just at that point was like, well, screw everybody. I'm going to kill everybody. <laughs> She's like a Rosie O'Donnell, to, um, who was the conservative lady on The View at the time. Oh, Elizabeth Hasselhoff. Elizabeth Hasselhoff. She's like, you said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> what did I do? You did nothing. <laughs> so at this point, with the beehive scene, this is when Mel finally is getting a little worried. He's like, he thinks the camp actually may be shut down if this doesn't stop. It's the first time he's... I'm telling you, because you know what? The Godfather is calling for an update. He ain't got no good news to tell him. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'd be sweating too. Don Corleone. I'm trying to make this work. <laughs> I'll make it work. I'll fix it. I promise. Because <laughs> he's oh, afraid shit. of waking up with a horse head in his exactly. bed. Exactly. That's funny. I had not once thought of that at all. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Chris? Have you ever thought of that? Have you ever thought that about this? 
I never thought about it until Chad told me because him right. and his buddy were the ones that were talking about it. So I was sitting there going, okay, I can probably see this. Yeah, I, mean, I can see this as a possible storyline. I mean, and then later at some point in the movie, I forget when he actually does like the Italian he does, like yeah. hand gesture thing. And I'm like, see, I'm telling you, this guy is in the Italian mob. This, this camp is a front for the, for money laundering. And the next, you know, his Don is hearing all this, some bad press He's probably like, coming I'm out of it. I'm hearing that, yeah. My boy died. I'm hearing the, this creep boy that you fucking hired got burned to, you know, shit. And yeah, it's, like, it's not I, looking good. Like, I don't want to lose the money. You know, it's, it's bringing cops. It's bringing cops in. It's not I've good had, for the You've camp. had cops in my area, Mel. I don't like I don't, what I'm hearing here. I don't like the liability, Mel. You know, and the real, the crazy thing is. No. Okay. So the, the beehive death scene. I'm sorry, but that kid could have crawled out from underneath the stall. <laughs> it was big enough that he could have. That was like just, one of those other death scenes. He could have it, it crawled right drew, on out. It was yeah. drawn out longer than it should have. And I'm like, there was a possibility for this not to have occurred here the way it could. And then, like, I think those wasps were, must have been like mutant wasps or something because it was fast how quickly they like invaded his body and was like laying eggs and shit like that under his skin. It was I, fast. It was pretty, it well, was pretty- Maybe the laying eggs part, but I will tell you when they come, they come fast. Oh yeah, no, I'm sure. But the fact how he died so quickly and like how his skin looked and like that, like I don't know. Yeah, that's I'll fair. Say, well, you know, that alone should shut for... down the camp for those mutant bees. Like they need to study those bees. <laughs> well, well, it could be how he had an allergy, and he that's was reacting faster exactly. than some. Exactly, he could have died from well, the anaphylactic shock could have happened mm. real quick. And I mean, you're also talking. About possibility of them being wasps and wasp or like come on there's come on chad you not remember wasp, thomas j chad you not remember thomas j i do but i don't <laughs> did he did he step on a bee's nest or a, a hornet's nest or something because i think i thought wasps were not um venomous well he was allergic to everything in that well movie, true yeah. poor little thomas j he can't see without his glasses <laughs> Hey, be careful. That that makes you cry every time. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's one of those lines that'll get you. <laughs> I will Josh say. Tearing up. His eyes are all watered. Now. I know, right? You can see it, folks. He's getting a little watery thinking about it. <laughs> but I do think the death scene was cool, but I just thought he could have crawled out from underneath that star. Right. He didn't he could have escaped, which is the only down part of that. Well, you know, when part. you're in your most vulnerable moment, you panic. Yeah. He didn't well, want to get caught crazy. crawling with his ass hanging out with shit all over it. <laughs> He'd rather just die than be caught with shit on his ass, I guess. Yeah, I saw a video of these two women getting in a fight at a clothing store, and this one lady, like, literally shit herself <laughs> while oh. these two women were fighting. And what made it worse is that the camera person, like, zoomed in on this lady's ass where, like, the shit had, like, smeared. And, Wait, like, a woman that whatever. wasn't in the fight? No, 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 no! It was two women that were in the fight, and one of the women that was oh, in the one fight. of the women in the fight. Yeah. Oh, I'd use that to my advantage. She yeah, right. Started, she was a vulture at that point. You just start just... smearing it all over your opponent's face, <laughs> <laughs> shoving it in her mouth. God, oh, that's gross. <laughs> eat it! Eat it! <laughs> we're back outside the cabin. We're trying to do some fakery here. We're doing we get a killer POV, but it turns out just to be Paul, and I don't think anybody's thinking this is Paul. Chris, do you remember at this point who did you think was the killer? Like, were you thinking Angela this whole time as we go through this? I was thinking she was part of it, or at least definitely also Ricky. Right. So, yeah. Uh, I know me and my me and my buddy were well, my friends they were thinking that it was Angela and Ricky. Right. That they were you know double teaming. I mean, and, it was pretty obvious that somehow they played a part in it, but. Mm-hmm. At the same token, you weren't really sure in terms of what their motive was, other than the bullying. But I, I just knew that there was something more to it. So, right, and they do the thing where they throw you off by using Ricky's hands in some of the death scenes. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, yeah. So you you automatically you'll know see like some of the you know like a boy. You could tell it'd be like maybe a boy's arm or very a masculine hand. arm. Yeah. yeah. So you would see like these little differences, but. And, and there's just a, other differences a, where the hair was longer than his too. So then it was like, well, maybe this is Angela. So, well, I will say there is a scene later on where it's Ricky in a wig doing the scene to try to throw you off. 
See, that's just that's just cheating. Well, that is cheating. There was that the other scene that comes up where because it was an HD, Chad was like, "Oh, you could definitely plainly tell that's more her because of the way that the HD worked on that moment." Yeah, there was a scene where she, she was standing. There was a light behind her, so it kind of it was it before like Judy's death. Ever, but the yeah, really. Yeah, I'm pretty the, sure Judy's death is the one where it is actually Ricky in a wig. So it's that funny. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe it is, but I mean, like, yeah. you can clearly see that, like, I don't know. Because when she's like, oh, it, what are you doing here? And then you see that shot, like the full body shot, and Chow was just like, oh, that like, you see looks the more like Angela. Stuff. I don't know. Yeah. I was like, it looks like Angela, but yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if they did Ricky. Because, I mean, I guess, you know, if you put Ricky in a wig, they would look the same. Well, he was wearing a red shirt. Well, wasn't he wearing a red shirt at that moment? So maybe it was a red herring. <laughs> there you go, Chris. I like it. And this is where we get Paul turning into his true self. And he's trying to be a little uh, little too forcible on himself with Angela here. Go down the beach, start trying to get into her clothes, yeah. take her top off. And I'm like, you're 13, like kid. Looker. You're 13. You're too kid. A little young to be doing going this far with her. She doesn't like he's it. He's not a kid anymore, Josh. He's a man. I mean, okay, I guess. I guess, Chad. I guess. <laughs> but after this is what you were talking about. This is where when she runs away, Judy ends up finding Paul, and this is where Angela catches them kissing out in the woods. And yeah. it was a cute little romance that was developing between Angela and It was cute up until that moment he was being a pushy Paul. little asshole. Exactly. He went yeah. too far. She was willing to kiss him, just stick with it. That, let that be good enough for now. My goodness. You're young. You're young. But now this is where we get Mel going, starting you're to like, go full how psycho long should here. I wait? You're like 35. So you're 35 <laughs> <years old. laughs> That'd be a good age. 35 sounds good. And now we get Mel going full psycho where he's confronting Ricky thinking he's the killer. He's he's messing oh, up yeah. his camp. He's messing up his just, operation for the dawn. Right, Chad? Exactly. He, he just automatically, confront. he's soon like, it's Ricky. That's Ricky. Ricky did that. While he's confronting Ricky is the scene Chris was talking about where Meg picks up Angela and throws her in the water. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's just in there trying to argue with Ricky on the... But That's meanwhile, crazy. it's like you can't hear the you girl can't screaming. Hear or anything. And then, like, beef, you know, Sergeant Beefcake walks up and, like, goes immediately to, you know, Mel and, and Ricky. And I'm like, you, did you not see what was going on? <laughs> exactly. In the distance back there? With, right. you know, the girl screaming her head off, about to be thrown into the water. And apparently this is where she gets rewarded because this is where she gets her night off. So apparently they, they wanted her to yeah. do that. <laughs> she gets a reward for throwing That's her what in the water. I, thought of the I was like, the next scene here, and she gets rewarded. And I'm like, but she just threw a girl into the lake. <laughs> <laughs> in the words of Meryl Streep from Death Becomes Her, you're in the shit house now, pal. <laughs> well, that wouldn't be until the second movie. <laughs> yeah, if you haven't seen the sequel yes that is true oh that's good but no, now Meg's going she wants to get ready for her date to take a shower but of course the line is extremely long in their cabin so she goes next door to the other cabin where for some reason nobody's there you'd think if they knew exactly. this was there why would not other people be going over there exactly. as well why are the other girls over there waiting and are using the I, shower by I then? would be splitting that line up there's that many yeah. people waiting I would split that line up but that, I'd be like you know I'm gonna sleep in that cabin over there I probably would too yeah yeah really but it ends up being a mistake because she gets stabbed while in the shower. Your typical little slasher killing here. Very psycho inspired. Yeah, yeah, in the shower and everything. Yep. But it's pretty gruesome in a way because that that yeah, shot the knife of the going down, ripping yeah. through her back. Yeah, that's my buddy. My like, well, no, it was later when she falls out of the shower when Mel finds her, and uh, you see like the the wound on her back. My buddy's saying he's, he's like. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yep, he's about to find her, but first he's looking for her and he comes across Judy making out with this guy. Oh, like, real quick, Chad. You got to tell Josh about what your buddy said of Judy. Oh, uh, yeah. So, like, uh, like uh, particularly this, this scene, uh, I think it was, actually, I think it was when they picked her up. Um, yeah, because she was wearing the bikini. Judy was wearing the oh, bikini. Yeah. And my my buddy, he goes, he goes, man, he's like, this bitch is getting up there on my villains list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> See, yeah, the power of good. what the movie could do, and all of a sudden, <laughs> like, Judy can be right there on your top villains list. <laughs> hey, which, for the actress, Karen Phil, she has to be proud of that. That's that's something to right. be proud of. Hell yeah. I mean, she did a good job. <laughs> yeah, she played the bitch character so well. What are you looking at? <laughs> Yeah, so. so weird. <laughs> yeah, she she was good at it. I'll give you that. She was. And here comes the scene Chad was talking about where she finds Meg and she's like, I got to stop him because he's think he's full on is Ricky. There's no, it could be no one else in the world but Ricky right now. And then we get one oh, of the. Is this also around the time, too, where Ricky kind of disappears for a moment because it was said that he was sick from dinner? Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. Because they were having the social that night. That's why all the kids were taking showers and stuff. Because they were yeah. having the social that night. And like, he was just kind of not there out of nowhere. And we didn't even see him get sick or anything Mm-mm. either. So no, it was just implied. Right. Yeah, and then, then we get. Later. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Josh. And then we get one of the most, the probably the most iconic death in this movie, and that is Judy's death. Yeah, yeah. With that was her. Chad, what did you think of it? You were sitting there like, was it through her? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, that's moment, funny. Which like, had, you like know. we were like it's very ambiguous the way it does it, right? And like my friends uh, and I we were sitting there like, did she just stab her in the vag with with that? Is that what happened? And we're like, in uh, of course I came home later that night and I watched it with Chris and Chris like it had to be in the vag because you couldn't stab somebody with that like <laughs> you know. Well, I mean, I don't suppose if it's. No, I guess not, because, I mean, it would have to be really hot to, like, pierce through flesh. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I think I think we're supposed to assume that even she puts the, the pillow, pillow on her face. Well, because, like, like the... Chris said, I mean, like, I mean, I guess that was, the, you know, Angelique's way of being like, you slut! How do you like this? You know? Well, and right. then the other thing, like, she she put her legs on the bed. Yep. And right. that's true. if she was just going to stab her, it wouldn't probably mm-hmm. matter. But she did that, and she covered her face with the pillow, with the so pillow, yeah. she knew the scream was going to be really loud compared to just catching someone mm-hmm. off with a stabbing. You know, well, maybe she just wanted to curl her pubes since she didn't have pubes of her own. That's, <laughs> That's right. true. Like, let's just straighten these curls out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give yeah. her that fair faucet look. <laughs> 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 oh fair down below huh mm. but man that it's oh that was crazy that death scene yeah it was <sighs> traumatic and you know they did it in such a subtle way mm-hmm. that you don't obviously see it so graphically but nope. you get the gist of it and it still makes you cringe it makes you cringe it makes so, you wince it makes you yeah and there there actually was a shot of her dead after this that they took really? out because it was too grisly. They didn't want to show it. And oh, also, wow. another fun fact, Jane Krakowski was originally going to play Judy in this. Well, the funny <laughs> thing is, I could see that. Yeah. But that's this awesome. scene is why she's like, nope, that's too much. I'm not going to do it well, <laughs> because of her, this scene. Well, she was a kid at the time, too. Yeah, she would have been really young. This probably would have been one of her first roles if she had done it. I feel like some of her parents would have stepped in and be like, no, she's not doing it. Mm. Uh, according to her statement is this scene was too grisly and she didn't want to take it on so damn you gotta think all these it is intense so it's intense but you know what if she i don't know if she could have seen the end result and if that Mm. would have been like if they explained it to her in that way that this is how we're filming if that would have changed her mind to a degree or something who knows but i could see her in the role of judy too as a kid it's kind of funny because i think of her in vacation and the way she looked in that and you know she was she was like the popular girl too with the boys so it kind of came full circle i guess <laughs> yeah, yeah. well if it was between this and vacation she probably made the better choice mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> well she honestly. had a memorable scene in vacation so yeah but daddy says I daddy do says the i'm the best at it <laughs> <laughs> And now we get Mel. He, this is where he finds Ricky in the woods, and he beats the living shit out of Ricky. Yeah, like no. this is an old man beating a little kid oh up. And just, yeah, he like went full on ape shit on Ricky or something. And now he thinks he's killed him because he's like, I got him. And then he gets up and he's like, Oh shit, I gotta get away. I can't be caught for this. <laughs> yeah. And then he takes an arrow to the neck. <laughs> so now our killer is also an, an archer. And then of course he finds out like, Oh shit, it's not Ricky. 
Yeah, yeah. He's like, wait, it, what, it's, it's you. Every time you, every yeah, time right. someone sees this, it's you. It's every you? single time, every it's you. It can't. Well, be I tell you, you, had good aim because it went right through the neck. Yeah, that's why I say all of a sudden our killer becomes an excellent oh, archer. There, specialist, yep. <laughs> an archery specialist. Well, when you have a slasher Hawkeye. set in the camp, you know your killer's got to be good with archery. That's true. Or even throwing an or axe. Or throwing an axe. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And now here we go. We're at the waterfront. We're at the water after the social. Angela with Paul. She's like, "You want to get naked and go skinny dipping?" Of course, this is Paul's dream. Heck yeah, I do. Oh yeah. Real quick though, to kind of back up, there was that part where she was, he was like, "Hey, let me apologize. I want to make it up." And she's like, "Meet me at the waterfront." And then after the social, right? He's like, "Oh, okay." But then, because we're missing another death scene, this is the one that, to me, doesn't make any sense. There was the counselor who took the little kids out oh, into the yeah. woods. You're right. I forgot to stick right out the woods. Head. And then when he returns, those kids are hacked to death with mm -hmm. a, with an axe or of some sort. So that's the one where I'm like, what did those kids do to deserve that? Oh, cool. Rosie, like, I don't know if it was <laughs> a way to try to torment the counselor, because I don't know if that counselor, well, I can't remember but, if that counselor did something to her. No, I don't think so. But that was the point where I told you, I was like, well, I think at this point, Angela's like, fuck it, yeah, you're all dying. That's the only thing I could come up with is that she was just like, well, I'm going to kill everybody. I'm now. going down. All you were going she, down. At that, even when she told that, when she told Paul to meet her at the waterfront, mm -hmm. you could tell she pretty much looked like she lost her mind mm -hmm. from her hair. That's um, fair. So and, that's the only thing I could come up with because otherwise, I don't know what those kids would have well, done to, set in, that's what yeah, to deserve what she did to them. Well, maybe I should be worried, Chris, because. My box set assigned meet me at the waterfront after the social, so I may be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, don't miss it. Go for it. <laughs> Just go ahead, honey. Take, Take a, chance. a chance. I knew it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. And then we get the cop. He's back on site. He finds Ricky alive. So Ricky did survive. Mel didn't accomplish what he thought he did. And then we get Ronnie, and I think the other girl was named Susie. And they go find, and they see Angela just sitting, Angela, humming from oh. the back. And yeah, and then we get the flashback to Aunt Martha, where she's giving the whole speech about, we already have a boy. We just That just won't work. We can't have another one. Oh, no, 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 yep. no. Yep. <laughs> and I she's think, like, Angela, I think I'll call you Angela. Oh, yes. Because I think Angela is a form of angel or something like that. Right. So... Chris, I want to get your opinion on this. What do you think about this? Because obviously we are all pro the LGBTQ community on here, mm -hmm. but this is a child being forced into this, not choosing this on his or her own, however you want to look at it. So I just wanted to get your opinion on that. Cause I don't think what Amart is right. doing is right at all in this. Well, I don't think it obviously it wasn't right on her either to do that, but I don't know. That kind of puts me on the spot a little bit, but I because I don't want to sound well, like no, I'm, there's just a lot of I'm like speaking on the trauma. Yeah, I don't want to sound like I'm speaking on behalf of the community. But no, no. I mean, I'm not asking you as um, I know, yes, yes, Chris, our resident member. But I'm going back. <laughs> I'm going back to what Chad was saying is how yes, this movie sheds positive light, but it also has gotten a lot of criticism over the years, yeah. and it's and it's reasons like this. This isn't a choice made yeah. by Angela. Well, I think too is just that. I mean, even up to that point, you had movies that somehow use the twist that, oh, this person is the other gender and they're yeah, and therefore they're, they're the other. So otherwise they're messed up in the head or something, because, I mean, you look at Psycho, you look at right. Deadly Blessing, which also came out around the same time, I think, or the same year. Or the killer in that also turned out she was trans. So I guess people just, the mindset was just thinking that, or even Science of the Lambs to that degree. It has mm -hmm. that kind of same uh, thing as well. Mm -hmm. But to me, I just kind of look at that. No, this is just a movie. And anybody, right. it doesn't matter if you're straight, gay, bi, whatever the case may be, anybody is capable of being some sort of psycho killer or whatever. Anyone can be just as evil as they could be just as good. So it doesn't exclude someone's 
sexuality that they could be bad mm-hmm. you know that's how i kind of look at it from my perspective but i know people's sensibilities are different in these times and a movie like that wouldn't fly very well unless somehow maybe done in some other way or with involvement of people in the trans community involved in the product or so you know yeah in order to to there'd probably be some conversations about that Yeah. yeah but i didn't feel like to me from my perspective and as a viewer i didn't feel like it was trying to have some sort of message of saying well you know gay people and trans people are awful people and this is what they do like that's that to me just wasn't the message it was just i think it was a shock shock to shock it's a shock Mm -hmm. exactly exactly i mean you look at um you know rocky horror picture show was so different for its time too because of its portrayal of sexuality and I think there's just always been a curiosity of it, but there's just some of those people who want it, who, if they want to take it as a negative thing, I think for some of them, they just kind of, I don't know. They, they try to look for something that's bad out of it just for the sake of something. That malicious they can, in yeah. It, when really it's just, no, that was not the intent. Sorry. I know that was a long explanation. No, no, no. Good. That's what I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear. <laughs> so when did, <laughs> But no, and after that, we cut back, and of course, they're back on the beach, and we see Paul's head rolls off on the beach, and then Which Angela counts. Angela stands up, and we get the full reveal that, yes, Angela, or we get the reveal in Martha's flashback about being Peter, mm-hmm. and yes, yeah. you get the that crazy hissing sound, I guess. I mean, it's a weird sound effect they use, and well, she went on full, like, crazy animal mm-hmm. sound, right. you know, you could tell at that point it just wasn't Angela, if you will. It, you know, it was everything crashed in her mind. So, you know, kind of how I took it is that also, I mean, and this is another explanation too. Like, if you want to kind of dig a little deeper, this could also be looked at as a way that, well, this is what happened to so much bullying in her life, along with the child abuse, the child abuse yeah. that she had to probably endure and also the trauma from seeing her family die Mm -hmm. right you know so i mean you're seeing basically the breakdown of someone's Mm -hmm. mental health that has now put them in this position so uh, and that's unfortunate that's sad you know you feel so if you want to find some sort of sympathy for the character there's your sympathy and i think it kind of shows that yeah, this is a horror schlock B movie, whatever you want to call it, but an entertaining movie on top of that. But there's a lot of things you can, like I said, you can unpack from it, and there's some right there. Oh, I can't agree. I can't disagree with any of that, Chris. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's good. I think that. All right, I think it's time we move on to some listener feedback and see what the people had to say it like there were several feedback too which was pretty cool Mail, motherfucker. all right so first up we'll have the guys from in film we trust podcast they say we did an episode on this some months ago we felt it used the identity politics and bullying tropes of its day to facilitate the slasher elements and while it has its issues it's a movie we both enjoyed overall I can see that too. I mean, that's what we were discussing, right? Right, exactly. Our buddy Anthony Brownlee, who will be on the show a little bit later next month to talk about Nightmare on Elm Street with me, he chimed in. He wanted to know, what's the scariest time we ever had at camp? And I think we all discussed, we never went to camp. No, No, the only thing that would have been scary for me is sharing that space with strangers (laughs) and taking a shower with completely naked strangers or whatever and them seeing me naked or what that was my fear and my fear really is just i i don't hate people i just don't like them to be near me there we go yeah but when you were a kid had you i mean i know you, and I also know. being away from home right i mean people are comfortable at home that's true. That's my, true. My fear would have been farting in front of somebody and be like, ah, you or farted. worst thing is you have the shits real bad but then yeah 
you're in those yeah, close quarters. <laughs> you know, you got the bathroom nearby the rooms, or and people well, like not all know, camps do, I guess. Some crawling under the stalls, or throwing shit at you over the top of the stalls while you're trying to do yeah. your business. And all those kids yeah, laughing at scary. you if they found out, like, there's someone shitting in there's the stall. There's someone shitting in the stall. <laughs> <laughs> so, being Anthony and him always having a story, I asked him for his so that I could read it. But he said his mom wouldn't let him go to camp. She wouldn't let him go because there were some horrible things going up on at the camps around him at that time. And she was yeah. fearful. So I can understand that. As for, I think both, I think for us, we didn't have camps that close by. I thought that I knew of anyway. Like I said, I didn't yeah, know. I don't know of any that were nearby back then. Ugh. My buddy Kevin from the podcast that wouldn't die chimes in. Sleepaway Camp was not a movie I was familiar with as a child. Hey, same here. Just discovered it twenty years ago, <laughs> so I agree with that. Only he said twenty years ago. Hey, we weren't children back then, Chad. We're old. Okay. <laughs> uh, excuse me. <laughs> Chad's like, speak for yourself. <laughs> Chad, you're, you're older than me, Chad. <laughs> All right, nine months. Nine months. Yeah. Eight months, actually, if you want to be exact. Oh, yeah, eight months. Yeah. Eight months. But then he he goes on to say, Now I consider it a staple of the Halloween season, and the ending is shocking, ridiculous, and totally unnecessary. Mm-hmm. The, other, the other crazy thing is, the entire opening sequence and that reveal has no effect on the crazy choices of the aunt. It's all on the aunt, not the boating accident. That's true. That was just a mm-hmm. choice to make. You know, the dad gay. Mm-hmm. That didn't really, yeah, I don't yeah. think it affected anything either. It didn't. No. I don't think any of that had a negative effect on the kids. No. Uh, the only thing, again, the only thing that would have been hard would have been the trauma of losing her parent and sister. Right. Exactly. So, And then all of a sudden she's now living with her aunt, which makes yeah. you kind of wonder, like, what happened to the other father then? Because as far as I know, the other parent would, didn't die in the accident unless they killed themselves maybe right I, and I'm, I'm not sure i mean obviously we get that one flashback scene to where they walk on in on them you know oh, yeah, them up or whatever yeah. and so you know he's there but maybe he's not he may not have any legal rights and the aunt does that could That's be what too, right? that could yeah. be what it comes down making to whoopee. Yeah. yes making whoopee <laughs> <laughs> but you know the other thing is i have to say if we didn't have the ending that we did and like i know he said it was kind of ridiculous and unnecessary i i don't know i'd probably say that yeah, it probably is just because the shock is what sparks the conversation i agree you know, if you didn't have that you wouldn't have really had the full reveal it would have been probably said through dialogue which would have been kind of boring kind of like psycho a little bit where it was just you know he's in there going oh well mrs bates died and so he took on the personality and blah well, you know would have been weird all right ebony from the gruesome twosome podcast chimes in love 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 this movie so incredibly silly which is what makes it that curling iron scene though Ouch, kabibbles. No thanks. Now, I don't know if kabibbles... <laughs> she's from Australia, so I'm guessing that's slang down there. I don't know. In the land down under? I don't know. Ah, crikey. <laughs> <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta have a meal with those vowels. You gotta eat, chew up them vowels. Yeah, I guess Chad, it's... Uh, it's well, Chad, Chad, say kabibbles for me then, because I can't say it. Kabibbles. Oh, I wouldn't... I don't know. Well, I don't, he you know. does better. Like, when he says home with an Australian accent... He does this. I have a hard time. I can't even say it. I'm like, like Australians, like when they say no, they don't say no. They say no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. Or instead of like, no. Like, oh, it's like the, I guess the vowel is more <laughs> emphasized or something. Right. Yeah. So I'm. I don't but think Chad I can does say a good it. job with it. Bibble. It was, what is Kabibbles? it? Kabibbles. Kabibbles. Ah, kabibbles. <laughs> yeah, I can't do it. No. <laughs> I wish needs to drop an audio file to us. <laughs> you know, oh, she, like like said, she has her own now. podcast. Maybe it's something she says right. on her podcast. So, Well, I kind of like that word now, so I feel like now I can use that for more like, holy kabebbles. Or, there you go. Oh, kabebbles. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Justin from the Film Effect podcast 
says, I can't remember the last time I saw this. I've been meaning to go back and rewatch it. I remember the end, of course, but that's about it. Yeah, I don't think the end will ever leave your mind once you see it. No, no. <laughs> that will live. That's the thing everyone talks about. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's that shock right there. That ending is what sparks the conversation every time about the movie. No matter if it was negative or positive, what you say, it's going to spark that conversation. Then Ed, the host of the Film Effect podcast, says, I've never been a Sleepaway Camp fan. I always found it boring and felt there are much better slashers from the era. But, yeah, I don't, I don't agree, Ed. I don't agree. But through all that is a respect I have for its diehard fans because I've got to say it has a massive following. Although That's I do true. think the sequels are more fun. So, Chris, you obviously brought up the shithouse oh, death yeah. scene in one of the sequels. Yeah. But what are your thoughts on the sequels? I would say I think the, two is I a lot more fun. I don't know about three. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would say. It's, yeah. I'd say out of all of them, like the one I remembered most was the second one. Yeah. I don't know. The third, like both those movies were filmed back to back from what I understand. So, okay. But I thought the second one's more, is a little bit more entertaining. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think because I just like the storyline that it goes with that. But those two, the only thing is like those movies, those two become a little bit more comedic. Right. Compared to this one being more of a thriller, I guess you could say. And I kind of like the more thriller tone. That's just me. That's um, fair. I don't think they do anything really with the the whole twist at the end. They don't no, really no, capitalize on that it's, at all. It's like, oh, here's the legend of Angela. And right. that's, you know, kind of like, here's the legend of Jason. So, which is kind of yeah. funny because I like how the posters for those movies don't have Angela on the cover. It's just a random girl. <laughs> yeah. Which a lot of the vhs rental movies did that back in the day they just had yeah. random people on the cover yeah you would rent it off the cover and that wouldn't be anywhere in the movie yes definitely no. <laughs> and you're like wait wasn't this person supposed to be in the movie and they weren't tim from the on second watch podcast says a great movie to kill sean bean in yes on second watch they have a whole side show where they just pick movies to kill sean bean in since he dies in almost every movie he's in and they- <laughs> Oh, well, there we go. He does say, I do feel the chef got off the easiest of everyone, though. He should have mm-hmm. had it the worst. Yeah. I can see that, too. A little, I can see like, that, he's too, a little bit. Like, like, he's burned, but he does survive. He's not yeah. dead at the end. He's in pain, but... And he Which was... Which kind of makes you wonder, like... Uh, well, I don't know. Well, Chad maybe, did a great he, job Maybe he with... died of infection later. Hey, that's true. You can make that up in your mind, right? Like, oh, infection. <laughs> that's true, but too. I think Chad also made a good point. It's just that... I don't know if Angela really came in with the intent that I'm going to kill people at this camp. I think it was just something that started and it just got worse. Her breakdown just got worse over the time of the movie. So if he just happened to be there later in the movie, he probably would have died much worse than just being burned by a pot of water. Yeah, I I, I like that theory. I think you're on to something there, Chris. How's, How's it going? I think you're right. My buddy Carlo from the Movie Loot says, I saw this back in the 80s, and to be honest, I barely remember anything about it, but that final shot etched in my memory. And he gives that little rosy cheeks emoji like the embarrassed look. (laughs) Yeah. Like I said, don't worry. We all feel the same way. (laughs) (laughs) Scott from Shoot the Flick says, I came in knowing the twist, but the curling iron kill stands out to me. I agree. I do. I, I, I like. Listen to Chad and hearing about his friend seeing it for the first time. I hate someone coming in knowing the twist. Like, right. It's just it's so great. Like I didn't know the twist when we watched this movie. I had never heard of it. No. no. <laughs> so no. I, same thing. I just remember. I don't know. It's kind of funny to look back on it and be like, "Oh, this." You know, we're sometimes the word transgender is just kind of thrown in there. This transgender serial killer, blah blah. blah. And I'm going, "Well, this is interesting. What the hell?" <laughs> <That> <laughs> It sounds crazy. Let's give it a shot. Pete from the Middle Class Film Class podcast says, Sleepaway Camp does two things very well. It's a great movie to show people who have never seen the bananas ending, so it begs for rewatches and shares. And two, it's a gory, fun, kitschy, young adult slasher on its own right, even without the ending. It makes the perfect spooky season party movie. I can agree on I both agree. of those counts. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. It's definitely one of those movies. I think you can have fun with friends. And then binge movies respond to him saying the ant is the best part to which 
<laughs> oh, God, Pete. <laughs> Pete responded saying, eh, I'm partial to the cook and his friends calling the kids baldies as they all stream off the bus. <laughs> <laughs> to which the guy from Binge Movies put up a gif of Batman shaking, wagging his finger, saying, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> that was Chad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was and then, Batman and that gif. Mm-hmm. And Wyatt Renfro says, there are many hidden layers to the movie, which I feel like we've talked about. Yeah. Yep, and that is everyone's comments, so that thanks for chiming in, people. And now it's time to do our own ratings, and... Chad's the one I'm most curious about, so I'm wondering, like, do I let him go first or let him go last? First, first. Okay. I think we're all dying. All right. Yeah. No, I mean, I really like this movie. Uh, I mean, I I gave it four stars out of five. Yeah. I mean, it's up there. I mean, it's entertaining. Still. Okay. I was yeah, worried like where Chad would come have, in. I have. To, yeah. Like, if I have to watch it again, like, I wouldn't be mad. Ah, that that's a good sign. That's a good sign because I don't think either one of you guys were too happy about the thought of watching Blood Rage again. <laughs> <laughs> well, to me, it feels like apples and oranges comparing this to Blood Rage. I realize I'm just saying movies we've done. That's the only reason. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. sure, Josh, sure. <laughs> All right. So, well, Chris, you this was your movie, so I guess I'll go next. And this this is a five out of five for me all day, every day. I fucking love Sleepaway Camp. There, I've I've literally had people tag me when other people put out Sleepaway Camp episodes, and they're like, "Doesn't Josh really like this movie?" Because <laughs> they just know my love of Sleepaway Camp. So this this is a five every single time. I love this movie. I don't get bored with it at all. Like Ed was saying, sorry Ed, I don't find this movie boring <laughs> at all. I think even if you take out the shock ending, like like Pete was saying, this movie yeah. still works because one of those things this movie does that a lot of camp slasher movies don't is they kill kids not yeah 17 18 19 20 year olds they're killing actual 12 13 year olds in this and you don't yeah. you don't get that in a lot of these movies they won't go after the actual kids hell well, even like, it, yeah, in friday 13th like, part six the only one that has kids jason doesn't touch the kids doesn't no. which it is understandable because he was one of them who were bullied as a kid so i understand why he doesn't but a lot of movies don't have the balls to go there and then you got an old man in male beating the shit out of a little kid. So, yeah. I mean, this movie goes places even without the shock ending. So, I absolutely well, love it. You also had actors who were kids. You know, that it wasn't like this was necessarily adults playing kids. So, that right. was also, I think, very different for this horror movie. Right. Um, I say, I forget what did I read it. I want to say maybe I rated this like four or five stars. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot remember, but it's just high up there. So, you know, I, I love it. It's got a lot of rewatchability to it. And I don't know. I just kind of, I'm, I'm one of those people that I don't, I'm a stickler for the ending. I'm like, I don't think if you, if you don't have that ending, then it just wouldn't have stayed in a lot of people's minds in the same way against all those other slashers that came out at the time. There was just something very different with, because of that scene that yep. also went along with the reveal of the story um, excuse me of her story you know along with those flashbacks no, i can't, I can't disagree with that but there's so many great stuff in this movie and it's fun to rewatch. i haven't watched this one in a long time so it was great to rewatch it after a while oh, okay yeah this is definitely one that i normally catch at least probably once a year and I don't rewatch movies that often, but I definitely try to put this on once a year. Cause I, I, I love this damn movie. <laughs> it's great. It's, it's fantastic. That's for yeah. Sure. The only reason I hadn't chosen it yet, Chris is this was one that I probably would have waited till next summer when it hits his 40th anniversary. <laughs> but, <laughs> but Hey, you know, it's always good to talk about summer, uh, summer, huh? Sleepaway camp. Right. Um, Any time of the year. That's true. No, that's true. That's true. I was thinking more of the anniversary, not the sign, because the anniversary is November. But yeah, no, no big deal there. We got it on. It won the poll. That's what the polls are for. Ah, uh, as for what's coming up, we're leaning into October pretty heavily. We're kicking off October next week as Chad comes on to do a normal guest spot, and we're going to talk about Spawn. 1997 <laughs> and then, yeah from 97 then 
Chad and Chris will be joining me, and we will be talking to Alan and Will from Pocus Hocus with a very fun topic that should be a fun discussion. Let's see. We have Midsommar coming. I mentioned Anthony's coming on to talk Nightmare on Elm Street. Chris is coming to talk about a, I'd say, underseen 80s horror gem in the Rejuvenator. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't think a lot of people really know that one, but it's out there. It's a good one. Right. <laughs> go watch it. <laughs> and then to end October and go through November, I am kicking off what I'm calling Film Effect Vember as. Ed will come on to end October and we'll be talking about the Blair Witch Project. And then throughout the first at least four weeks of November, I'll have the rest of their his crew on all the different co-hosts, Jocelyn, Corey, Andrew, Justin. They'll all be coming on with their own episodes. But before all that, as September ends, since I got horror started early, I want to give you one more episode that's non-horror. So this Friday will be a bonus episode with author John Gaspard, and he will tell you why Harold and Maude should be your next favorite movie. There we go. That's a good one. <laughs> mm-hmm. I like that one a lot. So, oh, that's going to wrap it up for us, guys. Why don't you give those handles, and we'll get out of here. Go ahead, Chad. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, I'm not really active on anywhere else. Twitter, green screen grin. And then you can find me on Instagram at X Topher of Oz and on Twitter at CBC Monkey. I'm on Letterbox, which you can find through Chad or Josh's <laughs> Letterbox. Hey, I got to stick with it, right? <laughs> that is that is your brand, Chris. That is That's your brand. brand. Yeah, easiest thing to do, go to linktr.ee slash YNF movie pod. It'll have Twitter. It'll have all the social media. It'll have YouTube. It'll have my personal letterbox so you can see what I'm watching that's not being covered on the pod. And as I said, I'll be back next week with an episode or Friday with an episode on Harold and Maude. So until then, you guys take care and I will talk to you next time.